Back in 2000, I became the proud owner of a female Cocker Spaniel that we named Sierra. She was energetic, full of life, and just so cute. I fell for her really hard. But we also realized we wanted her to have a playmate to play with. So, we got one of her brothers, Tommy. Tommy was also just a sweetheart of a dog. We had so much fun with them as puppies. And everything was great for a while. Then one night, the dogs made a mess in the house and my spouse at the time informed me that I would have to choose between the two dogs because one of them had to go. I reluctantly went along with that, but I was heartbroken. And I ended my marriage a couple of years after that. But the good news is, Tommy went to live with some really good friends of ours and they spoiled him rotten and gave him a fantastic life. He even got to live on a golf course and he lived to the ripe old age of 14. I was still able to visit Tommy and bring Sarah and they got to play together and I also took them to McDonald's to get ice cream on their birthdays, which was fun. My dad loved dogs and other animals, and he always treated them with respect. I definitely got that gene passed directly to me when I was born. It was funny to watch dad in the kitchen accidentally dropping bacon, sausage, ham, chicken, turkey, steak, whatever, onto the floor anytime Sarah was in there. It was good times. And that was one happy dog, let me tell you. So the years passed by and Sarah and I had some really good times together. And of course I spoiled her rotten. Whenever I traveled, she came with me. If she couldn't come with me, my next door neighbor, Pat, could always watch her. So we were very lucky and very blessed. And First thing I knew, it was already 2010, and she was 10 years old, in fact, soon to be 11, and I decided to get some good pictures of her with a professional photographer, so we did that. And also, I was dating a girl named Susan, who my family and friends all loved very much, and I thought she might be the one. So everything was great, until it wasn't. It turns out, Sira had a secret. There was a tumor growing inside of her that is correctly called splenic hemangiosarcoma. It basically is spleen cancer, but it can also be a cancer that's located on the heart or the liver or some other organs. But what happens is one day this thing will get big enough and it may rupture. And when it ruptures, the dog bleeds out internally and dies. These tumors are not easy to detect. And since we were blissfully unaware, we thought we had a lot more time with Sira, but we were wrong. We went to bed on Sunday, December 5th, and everything seemed fine. But just a few hours later, my little girl was dying. Even though we rushed her to the emergency vet, she passed away shortly after we got there. I was extremely upset, but we came back home and tried to get in the bed holding Sarah and at least get a couple of hours sleep before the sun would come up. So it's six o'clock, I got up out of the bed, went into the kitchen and turned on the coffee pot, and then Susan walked out to hug me, and we were just standing there. 
I grabbed the remote and turned on the TV. And as it came on, it was on Channel 9, which is a local news channel in Baton Rouge. The very first thing that I saw was the letters S-E-R-A at the top of the screen. Susan saw it too. She even asked me about it. This is the actual video. Good morning, Diane. Good morning, everyone. We go uh, to our accident board. We have an accident on Old Hammond at Sarah Cedar. A truck ran into a storage facility. They say it's a light pickup, and they say that the storage facility, a truck ca caught on fire. So Baton Rouge Police and Baton Rouge Fire Department on the scene. Accident with injuries there. It's crashed at Old Hammond at Sarah Cedar, so be very careful on, uh, on the roads out there if you're in that area. I had lived in Baton Rouge 25 years and I had never heard of a street called Sierra Cedar. But after I did a little bit of research, I found out out of 6,500 streets, there was only one that started with the letters S-E-R-A. It just struck me as odd that at approximately the same time that Sierra died, there was a wreck on a street that starts with her name and it's even spelled the same. So a couple hours went by and then I decided to call mom in Lafayette and tell her what had happened. And I was very upset, but she told me, she said, do you realize what day it is? And it was right then I put it together that it was December 6th, 2010, and it had been three years to the day since dad passed. But all of this stuff was nothing compared to what was about to transpire. It was 11 days later, on December 17th, 2010, I got woken up by a neighbor knocking on my door at 6 o'clock in the morning. And she tells me, your dog is loose. So I told her that Sierra had passed away, and she says, well, there's one that looks just like her right down the street. So I looked, and this is what I saw. This malnourished, flea-ridden, emaciated dog that does appear to be a Cocker Spaniel, but no collar, no microchip, no nothing. It appeared to us that he had been dumped and he was living off the streets. So we tried to catch him, but he was too fast. Later that morning, I got a call at the office from one of my neighbors, Beth. And Beth had managed to catch this dog and wanted to know what I consider fostering him. And I said, Beth, I haven't even told anybody yet, but Sierra passed away, which she was just very upset. But she said, well, would you want to come take a look at this one? And I said, sure. So I went over there that evening. I went over there. And I took one look at him, and of course, I fell in love with him, and I said, sure, I'll take him home, we'll get him to the vet, and I'm thinking he's going to be my next dog. And Beth said, oh, that's great. She said, you know, I've already made up a name for him. And I said, what's that? And she said, Henry, doesn't he look like a Henry to you? So here... I will state the obvious. My dad's name was Henry Warren Patterson. All I can say is I definitely had a slight chill go through my body when she said that because Beth doesn't have a clue what my family members names are and I had never even heard of a dog named Henry before and that's being totally honest. But when she said it, I just looked at her and I said, wow. I talked to mom the next day and I relayed that story along with all the other kind of weird things that had transpired. And mom just said, oh, Mike, you are supposed to take that dog. That dog was sent to you. And she said, but you're not naming him Henry. And we both just cracked up and I said, okay, we'll come up with another name. 
So we picked a name that dad used to use on the farm growing up when he was young, and it was Major. And basically every dog on the farm was named Major. Don't ask me to explain that. So we began our lives with Major, and this story has a very happy ending. Major turned out to be the most awesome dog, and we were very thankful and blessed that he came into our lives. And that's how the story ends. If you want to see more about Major, check out Major the Cocker Spaniel on my YouTube channel.